places to the right. In this case, our resulting number is 381 milligrams of total solids per liter of river water. Now we're ready to use the Q value data table chart in order to calculate what our Q value will be for this value of total solids. Now that we've found the total solids in milligrams per liter, we can go to our chart 9, total solids, in our STAT manual. And when you get there, what you need to do is just find that 381 along here. And notice that the Q value chart's not really well divided up. So you're going to have to use you know, some of your graphing skills here to try and determine if that's 350 and that's 400, OK? then that's 375 right there. And a little bit to the right of that's going to be 380. And so we're going to be kind of guesstimating it at 381 right there. And what we'll do then is you take a straight edge, because you want to get this as accurate as possible, and have it go straight up from that and find out where it intersects the line that's been pre-drawn on the graph. Once you do that, you can make a little mark right there with your pencil and follow it across and see right where it intersects, and you'll find that it intersects just below the 50 in terms of Q value. So it looks like it's right at about 49 or 48 for a Q value for total solids, the total solids that we had tested at this particular day for a river water. So we've got a Q value right around 49 for total solids with the water that we tested. Being in the turbidity and total solids group, what you can do is um, you can run your turbidity tests out at the river and then bring your water sample back to perform your total solids tests in the laboratory. Um, one of the things that you look for when you look at turbidity is you're looking at the amount of light penetration through the water. You've all been or seen pictures of a uh, mountain stream and you know how crystal clear it is and you can see that the river is carrying very few sediments and the sunlight penetration makes it all the way to the bottom of the river so that you can see the stones and the gravel in the bottom of, the, of a fairly deep river up in a mountain stream. However, by the same token, you may have noticed a, a very muddy river, after, especially after a rainfall, maybe around here or down at the Mississippi River. In that case, the light penetration is very small amount, you know, because the river is carrying so much sediment that um, we would describe the river as being very turbid. So turbidity is a measure of water quality in terms of light penetration, which can affect other factors in the, in the river as well, such as dissolved oxygen and total solids. So what you're going to need and what Mr. Matthews is going to tell you about is your turbidity kit, what should be in there, what you should find when you take it to the river and get ready to do your turbidity test. Okay, here's our material. Like you'd find in any of the kits, there's a, an, an instruction sheet for you. You've got two cylinders. One is going to contain a distilled water sample for a comparison. The other will contain the river water. And you can't see them on camera, but uh, there's two dots on the bottom that will allow you to, to gauge how turbid the water is. Black dots on the bottom of those. Our turbidity reagent is a chemical that will add to the distilled water to match it up to the, to the other water sample. And we have a little dropper to add it with. So what we will do now as a standard procedure is, is get our safety goggles on and our gloves on as you would handling any chemical. And remember, since we're here in the lab or out at the river, you're going to handle the chemicals the same way. So let's get our stuff on. Ready? I'm ready. Since you are turbidity, you're going to have to make sure that you've collected your water um, probably as one of the first groups to collect water. Um, you do not want to have anybody get into the river and start walking around and do anything that might stir up the bottom or change the turbidity of the water as it actually is when you first get there and it's flowing through. So you'll get your water sample from the river. And of course, we've got our safety equipment on now that we're uh, going to work with river water. And, um, the other thing that you'll need is you'll need a bottle of deionized water in order to be able to, to run this test. So the first thing that you want to do is collect your river water and fill one of the columns with 50 milliliters of river water. This is the very first part that you have to do when you begin your test. 
and we'll show you that. Mr. Matthews taking the water sample and kind of swirling it around in case any of the um, solids or uh, sediments that were causing the river to be turbid in the first place have settled, he's mixing them back up as if they were stirred around by the river. And he's carefully filling that uh, first observation tube up to a graduate called the 50 milliliter mark right there. And you can, you'll be able to see that right on the tube that it says 50 milliliters. Okay, and the very first thing that he needs to do is look down the tube filled with river water and, and see if he can see the black dot. If he can't see the black dot, he's going to have to run a, different, a slightly different test. It's actually the same test, only instead of using 50 milliliters of water, he'll have to only use 25 milliliters of water. So once you look down, can you see the black dot, Mr. Matthew? That black dot is there, and, and like you do in a lot of tests, double check, ask your partner to, to verify that for you. So I'll ask my partner here. And yep, I can see the black dot too. So we know that we can go ahead and proceed with our procedure for the 50 milliliters of water. In some cases, after maybe just a real strong rain or something, it would be so muddy that you might have to use the 25 milliliter um, amount of water. Okay. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to fill the comparison tube up with um, the same amount of deionized uh, water or distilled water. And since deionized water has had all the sediments and particles removed from it, you can imagine that it's pretty crystal clear. I'm going to pour this to the same line as the adjacent cylinder. And these are, these are mini graduated cylinders, so what you want to do once you get both samples in there is get down at eye level and make sure that your, your, the bottom of your meniscus in the water is lined up to the, to the line in the graduates. And I see that those are both fine, so what do we do next, Mr. P? Okay, if they're both fine, the next thing that they do is if both samples are equally clear, then we can say that the turbidity would be zero. In other words, it becomes a little bit subjective now. You have to look at it and decide, hey, how clear is the one from the river, and does it match up with the one of the deionized water tube? And as you do that, would you say that they are equally clear? Get them nice and close together, look down. They are not equally clear. And again, since you're working in a group, you can have another partner see if they agree with you and run the same check. And I would tend to agree that the clear one is, is much different, or not much different, but at least significantly different from the river water. Okay, so if they're not identical, then what we have to do is add drops of the standard turbidity reagent to the distilled water in 0.5 milliliter amounts, or 5 tenths of a milliliter amount, until they become equally turbid. So what Mr. Matthews got is a little eyedropper there that's marked up to 0.5 milliliters, and he's going to get that amount of reagent in there and go ahead and add it to the clear test tube. So our goal is then to try and match them up in terms of turbidity. Make sure you add it to the deionized water sample and not the river sample. After every dropper full or half dropper, dropper full, check your, check your dots again. And I'm saying they're still not equal, so. So if they're not equal, you keep adding um, drops of the turbidity reagent in 0.5 milliliter amounts until they're equally turbid. Second one, as you do with any chemical titration, make sure your dropper is clear of the side of the glass and you're going straight in with the chemical as I'm attempting to do here. Still not the same. Remember, you're looking at the, the visibility of that black dot in the bottom. Don't try and determine how clear the column of water is. Just look at that black dot and try to make sure that they seem identical in terms of the amount of uh, turbidity reagent you've added compared to the river water. This is our third, third dropper full. We're getting close. Take a, once again, ask my partner to confirm what I'm doing here. It's getting close. I would say that I would still think that you might have to add another one and then decide if you've gone too far. So here's our fourth dropper full. I think even still another. I would agree. Number five.
And I'm even going to vote for number six. Okay. Take a look. What do you think? I think you could go one more. Number seven. More. Yep. And eight. I'm going to say I'm, I'm done at eight. I would say so too. So it took eight drops to match up with the 50 milliliters. And each drop is equal to five Jackson turbidity units. And you might ask yourself, what the heck is a Jackson turbidity unit? Well, not to worry. A Jackson turbidity unit is just the units that we use to measure turbidity, just like we use pounds or grams to measure the weight of something or the mass of something. In this case, we use Jackson turbidity units. And so we have a label on it so that it, we just don't say, oh, the turbidity was 12 or the turbidity was 10. We have something to say. And since it was eight drops and each drop is equal to five Jackson turbidity units, it just becomes eight drops times five or 40 Jackson turbidity units. If we were to use the 25 milliliter amount, if the river was so turbid, then each of the drop would be equal to 10 Jackson turbidity units. But since we use the 50 milliliter amount, each drop is equal to five Jackson turbidity units. So that's how you do the test. Very simple, and you're going to repeat that test using the same water sample three times and find your average number of Jackson turbidity units right at the river and record that down into your laboratory notebook or your journal. Remember our calculation from the lab value gave us eight drops of reagent. We multiplied that by five to give us a JTU reading of 40. When you look in the manual for the calculating chapter, be careful as you look at the two scales that you're using the, the bottom scale of JTU. The top scale is for another type of test that we are not doing. So our number of 40 lines up right here nice and evenly. Find a straight edge ruler. Line it up and find the point of intersection to the diagonal line in the graph. And if I do that carefully here, it's easy to pinpoint it at that mark. And then use my straight edge to go back to the vertical axis and see that it intersects the Q value. Boom, dead center between 40 and 50. So the Q value for turbidity in this test is 40, 